Why do you struggle with this decision? This is the Mac Pro you're looking for. You will consider it the Mac Pro. You will purchase the Mac Studio. Okay, so it's Thursday and I ordered the Mac Studio. And I wanna spend a little bit of time today talking about why I did that. During the Apple event, when I was watching it, I got so excited about what they spoke about and the performance and what this machine is going to do. Now, like I think most people, we're all expected like an upgrade to the Mac Pro and the MacBook Air, the, you know, the smaller ones. And I was thinking, I don't think they're gonna do that, at least not with an M2. I think it's kind of too early. And lo and behold, it turned out I was right. Apple wasn't finished with the M1 chip and what they came out with was something that we did not expect. Now granted, there were some people out there that did mention that more than likely, they were going to double the chip. Um, I think came in the guy, his name from Max Tech, who mentioned that there's this little spot that they saw on the bottom of it after someone did an X-ray the chip. And yes, we got the M1 Ultra. And I figured that that's what they were gonna do. They were gonna improve upon the M1 chip to give us something a little bit better. We know typically, as Apple said, usually when you have two chips on a motherboard, you never get twice the performance. You kind of get maybe 1.5, 1.75. So we're all kind of expecting the same thing on the Mac Studio. It doesn't seem as though they can do it, but in my mind, you know, seeing the fan that's inside this machine, I think the M1 chip having more cooling capacity will allow the chip to scale a little bit better. Some leak benchmark came out and showed that it's about double. And of course, we haven't seen much on the graphics, it's really like on the CPU side of things. And I don't think it's bad. You know, when Apple said that this machine can compete with some of their Mac Pros, I think a lot of people really kind of overlooked that because it's like, yeah, there's no way to be touching the Mac Pro. But if you remember, the M1 Max and the 16-inch MacBook Pro was doing some tasks better than some people's Mac Pro, okay? Now granted, we, we all know that when manufacturers talk about their specs and their performance, when they're introducing something new, they do cherry pick those benchmarks. They pick the ones that make them look good. Apple is not the only one that does that. And you know, I've seen some videos out there that say that Apple is lying and so on and so forth. I don't think they're lying because when some of these real world tests come out, it shows for sure that these machines beat other machines in certain areas. Will everybody come out at some point and go, hey, well, you know, Man, guys, you know, our, our stuff is really good over here, but, but over here it kind of sucks. No, nobody does that. They want you to know about the great improvements they made on this particular device, in this area, this area, maybe not so much this area, but it's good over here. Why, why we talk about that? It's like dating. You know, you, you don't go out and tell the girl or the guy that you're dating about all your flaws and all your issues that you have. No. You sell them on the good stuff, right? As content creation is taken off, YouTube has been taken off. People want better cameras. They want better computers. They want things that can handle these things faster. Over the years, Apple has been known as a creative company. If you want to do design and so on, you get a Mac. That's just how it's been. It's, it's nothing new. So here we are many years later and Apple decided that they want to do their own chip. And they looked at the market and they say, well, what can we do differently? What can we do better to make the people that buy our stuff happy with buying our stuff? And I think one of those things that has been missing is better performance when it comes to graphics. 
So here comes Apple some years later after working with Intel and decide, hey, we're gonna come out with this new Mac Pro. And they did, really nice. That modular things that we like. Now those of us who like to tweak machines and add video cards and so on, you know, in the SLI that uh, the NVIDIA AMD had and the cross, was oh, it Crossfire was AMD? SLI was NVIDIA, yes, that's how we go. So two cards together or three cards, hook them up and get better power. But typically going that route doesn't mean you get double the performance. If you bought a workstation class system that could hold multiple GPUs, yeah. Then AMD came out with a Threadripper and a Threadripper board and you could put you know, two, three video cards in that sucker, there was so many um, PCI lanes in that machine that it allowed it to handle all these peripherals. I really wanted to go through for three, but then it changed out the board on me. That kind of sucked. I had to spend more money after, you know, just get my machine a little over a year to get an upgrade to the next system. The performance was fantastic, but the cost was gonna be ridiculous. I still held out hope for my you know, X570 board because I really wanted to get that 5950 or the 6000 series, whatever was coming next. I wanted to get that and found out that they're going to give up on the AM4 board and give us something different. All right, I know I got a bit longer than the PC side of stuff, but I wanted to lead you into why I decided that I'm gonna get this Mac Pro. I'm sorry, I keep calling it Mac Pro. The Mac Studio. The specifications on this, from what I'm seeing on some of the leaked benchmark, it's close to that Rubber 3990 that came out a couple of years ago. Now that's a high-end desktop machine. That was a $4,000 chip by itself. Okay, just a chip is $4,000. The motherboard was probably going to be about a thousand dollars, I think somewhere between seven hundred and a thousand dollars for the different boards that they had available for that. Now you also have to get a cooler and memory module just to get that thing started. All right. So I think you're probably already looking at five thousand just to, to upgrade to that if you wanted to. And to say here we are a couple of years later and we have a machine that's seven inches long, seven inches wide, and about, well, not seven, 7.7, 7. So let's call it eight inches, and four inches tall, 3.7, four. That's gonna perform quite similar to that chip. That's a big deal, all right? And you're also thinking about today's chip, well, the highest performing one that we know about right now is the 12 nanometer K from Intel. And if they say that this thing can perform as well as Intel in certain um, workloads, yeah, I believe them. The MacBook Pro proved that, you know, what they've done with the M1. Well, even the MacBook Air and the 13-inch Ma MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini proved that the performance in those things were so much better than the things that came before them and were beating some, you know, mid-level to high-level PC machines. Oh, High level, when you, you know, well, I'm not beating them, but close enough in certain performance areas. Video rendering and so on. And I think that's one of the things that I like about the Apple stuff right now is the fact that their built in media encoders inside the machines, well, in the chip, to make the machine perform better. You bought the Mac Pro. And in order to get the best video performance out of it, you had to spend another $200 to get an afterburner card. Really? I mean, come on, why couldn't that have been built in the graphics card or the CPU? That afterburner card was something that Apple came up with, right? So to have them put that inside a chip, inside a small box, well, not to forget the, the new Mac Studio for a moment, but just oh, starting out with the, um, the M1 Pro and M1 Max, having that performance right there was doing a great job and they added more um, GPU, well, what do they call it? Video encoders inside the M1 Max. And now they're gonna double that in the M1 Ultra. Yeah, that's like mind blown for me right there. And I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. 
if you own the MacBook Pro, whether it be the 24 core version or the, um, the 32 core, you realize the performance on that thing is crazy. I did a video of mine where I said this thing was overkill. I was very happy with the performance of the MacBook Air and I still love that machine. But you know, having something that now I can grow with my camera, I can probably start expanding it into learning how to do um, forwards for our videos and editing and so on. To me, that's like really great. And I've seen some guys test some of these things and yeah, the performance is killer, right? So to say that the Mac Studio is not gonna perform, I don't think people are really looking at the fact that, you know, for those of us as content creators, photographers, um, you know, render, when it comes to renders, uh, damn it, my mind, it's my mind right now. But basically people who do coding and things along those lines, you need this kind of power inside the machine. And you don't have to have this gigantic box anymore. You have something, yay, what about this tall, little, actually a little less than this. And do that kind of performance, it's great. So that's why I decided I'm gonna get one. I was still gonna hold on to my Ryzen PC, but at this point, she's, she's gonna have to go as well. I've always liked to have something from either platform just to kind of, you know, have that balance out. One kind of fails, you can do certain things. And one of the reasons why I went with the Rigi Resolve is because I liked how it worked on both the PC and on the Mac side. And it hasn't failed me so far. I know they've been optimized for the M1 chips. I didn't dive in when the MacBook Air, when the 2020 Windows came out with the M1 chips because I understand that, you know, the optimization wasn't there. But later on when I found that it was, I got a machine and tested it out and I loved it. So for me, yeah, I think for now, Apple's at the point where I can utilize all the equipment to know my workflow and be happy with it. Does that mean I'm gonna give up on PC totally? No, at least for the time being, yes. But as we know, technology changes, right? Who knows, AMD may decide to come up with something that is a system on chip and work with their vendors to create a small box like Apple and smoke Apple. Guys, I mean, AMD does CPUs and GPUs. I mean, granted now, Intel has been jumping into that uh, GPU field. It's kind of like that Irish thing that it had built into their processor. Now they want to build their own um, GPUs. So it's like called Alchemy or whatever it's called. And if you think between those guys looking at what Apple's doing right now, can figure out a way to make something similar, you know they're going to. They're going to do that and it's going to just make things better for us consumers who are looking for a machine that we just want to do the work and not have this big box that um, we have to you know, keep sticking things inside of and trying to tweak things. At an old age right now, I just want something that works. And the Mac so far is doing it for me. So to wrap this up, I think you know, whatever pleases you is what you should go with, okay? But I think a lot of people are going to like what Apple's doing right now. And this Mac Studio, it's a pro machine. I use that with air quotes because being able to beat the current Mac Pro in certain areas, based upon what they're saying, it's great. And for Apple to tell you that, you know that when that new Mac Pro comes out, it's gonna have to trounce everything that they've had before, okay? We've always known that the Mac Pro performance is not close to what the desktop machines are. They're usually a step or two above. So now they've changed the game and they've given us a desktop machine that performs like their current Mac Pro. So I'm just really wondering what's gonna happen when that new Mac Pro comes out. I wasn't willing to spend the kind of money that they wanted to charge for the current generation Mac Pro. But yeah, I'll shell out for the Mac Studio. And I know that when the next Mac Pro comes out, yeah, it's just game over. Unless 
there was some kind of subsidy that uh, Apple was paying to Intel, and by doing their own thing, it could allow them to drop the price and give us something that performs good, but not at $50,000, and I'm guessing maybe $20,000. But who knows, if Apple can charge you that money for it and people are willing to pay it, hey, it's profit for them, right? All right. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have anything to talk about, comments on what I just said, or how do you think about the new Mac Studio, my Pro PC, please put them in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you guys. I'm gonna sign off for now, and have a good night. We'll talk next time. Bye for now.